This is the Doggy Land Planetarium, a web page containing an interactive solar system simulation written using the 3.js WebGL library. You can find the planetarium at dogulian.com along with videos showing how to use it. There is a link in the description below. I have already set up almost everything to watch the total solar eclipse of July 2nd, 2019 from the moon. We want to watch the eclipse from the moon because from there we can watch the whole course of the eclipse and we will not just learn but actually see a lot about how an eclipse works. It is 1630 hours UTC or GMT on July 2nd, 2019 with the clock stopped. We are on the moon looking at the earth which is right here in front of us. To see that we really are on the moon, let's look down and then back off a bit until we can see the whole disk, the whole of the moon's disk. And there it is. The sun is behind the moon and we are in the moon's shadow. But we can see the moon because it is faintly illuminated by the glow of the full earth which is behind us. Let's go back down to the moon's surface and look back at the earth. And let's zoom in to get a better view and adjust the earth's position so that the path of the eclipse, which will be from about here across like that, is near the middle of the screen. And I think this should be good. Let's open the control panel by right clicking the mouse. We see that we have set the time rate to 60. That way the eclipse which took three and a half hours to run from beginning to end in real life will go by for us in about three and a half minutes. Now let's start the clock and close the control panel by right clicking again and let's watch the eclipse. The moon always casts a shadow in space. When that shadow touches the earth we call it a solar eclipse. The shadow moves across the earth from west to east because that is the direction in which the moon moves around the earth. Meanwhile the earth also turns from west to east much faster than the moon moves but not as fast as the moon's shadow moves. At this point we're starting to see a black shadow appear at the edge of the Earth's disk. In that area, the core of the moon's shadow is starting to touch the Earth and the sun is coming up totally eclipsed. That is how a total solar eclipse usually starts and it usually ends with the sun going down somewhere totally eclipsed as the shadow slips off the Earth. From our point of view, the area of totality will move across the Earth in a straight line, about from here to here. If you hold a sheet of paper over the video at the proper angle, the eclipse will move along one edge. But if you look at maps of eclipse paths, they are always curved. That happens because the Earth is curved and tilted. This part in the middle of our straight line is actually farther north than the two ends. So if we drew the path of the eclipse on a flat map of the Earth, our straight line would make a shallow upside down U. From our point of view, the eclipse moves along its path at a more or less constant rate. But from the Earth, at the two ends of the path, the eclipse travels faster along the ground, basically, basically because there the ground is at more of a slant to our straight line. Therefore, if, we're, if we were watching the eclipse from the ground, it would take less time from start to end of totality at the ends than it does in the middle. 
At only three and a half hours, our eclipse will be rather brief. It takes place in the southern hemisphere in early July, at the beginning of winter. And the eclipse is short for the same reason that the days are short at that season. If you look up local times for the start and end of the eclipse, the difference is much bigger than three and a half hours. That is because the eclipse moves east, crossing many time zones, and local time increases by an hour each time it enters a new time zone. At this point, the eclipse is starting to move over, the shadow is starting to move over an area of clouds, so we'll get our best view of it. We can see that the shadow is very dark in the middle, where it is total, where the eclipse is total, grayer outside, where it's only partial, fading farther away, where less of the sun is eclipsed. Totality will continue until the dark part of the shadow falls off the east edge of the Earth's disk. And now the sun is set, totally eclipsed, somewhere over Argentina. And that's the end of the total solar eclipse of July 2nd, 2019.